Morning to you wherever you're joining us from this morning. Today we're discussing something extremely crucial in the history of South Africa. A crime so grotesque, so gruesome, so heinous. A crime committed against the most vulnerable of our society. Crimes against children. Leanne, thank you so much for having introduced our panelists. Just to refresh your memory, we do have Brigadier Bafana Linda. He's representing the SAPS this morning. Mr. Yusuf Abramji, he's from a Crime Line and also Lead SA. And we also have advocate Simi Pele van Kran, and she's representing Business Against Crime this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Morning. Thank morning. you. Morning. I'd like to begin the proceedings uh, by reading a quote that I found extremely thought-provoking. It, uh, it triggered a few questions for me. Perhaps it will do the same for you. Uh, there can be no keener revelation of a society's soul than the way in which it treats its children. Mr. Maxine Williams, opening a pre uh, proceedings off air, quoted that particular saying by Udada Nelson Mandela. It comes at a very crucial time. It's juxtaposed with this saying, Crime expands according to our willingness to put up with it. Now that raises the question of A, how big is the scourge in South Africa? B, whose responsibility is it to deal with it? And then C, how exactly do we go about doing that? Let me start with you, Mr. Abramji. Uh, I want to know from you, heading up Crime Line where you receive tip-offs uh, anonymously from people reporting crimes, in your opinion, how serious is it? Have we reached crisis proportion yet? Good morning, Ayanda. There's no doubt that crime is a problem. Uh, for me, I think the last few months we've seen an upsurge in crime, and the fact that statistics are only released uh, almost a year later is a major problem. Uh, Pretoria, we have a problem. We must be very clear about it, and the last few weeks we've seen an upsurge in crimes against children, which is very worrying. And in the uh, audience today, we have family members uh, and friends of some of the victims, and I think it's only appropriate that we pass on our sincere condolences and our prayers uh, to the many families of the victims uh, of the spate of uh, crimes against children that we've experienced. Almost by the day, murder, rape, robbery, attacks on women, attacks on children have become a problem. We can blame the police, but that's not going to take us further. The fact that two police officers were killed this weekend is something that we need to talk about and we need to put it on the national agenda. We have the majority of policemen Ayanda are hardworking, they are effective, they are efficient, they are passionate. And very often, why do we have to only point fingers at the cops when there's crime? We have to direct our anger and we have to direct all our attention to the criminals. These criminals have no respect for our property, they have no respect for our lives. And we as a community need to say enough is enough. We have to fight the scourge. And yes, Crime Line, together with our partners, Business Against Crime, South African Police Service, Sebrik, Safek, Tracker, you name them, we are committed to creating a safer South Africa. The only way we're going to create a safer South Africa is by putting crime top of the agenda, which you are doing this morning, which we need to continue doing. Let's talk about it. Let's strengthen this partnership. And let's make sure that we encourage the public to blow the whistle on crime. We have to inculcate a culture of whistleblowing. Enough is enough because someone, somewhere, somehow, as the National Police Commissioner says, knows something about crime. We have to fight the scourge. Brigadier, let me bring you into this particular discussion at this point in time. We know issues of femicide and also crimes against children. In most cases, the perpetrators are known to the victims. It becomes very difficult to police such, especially if it's a, a dispute within the home and among the family members that result in child killings, child rapes, and also violence against women. How do you manage such as the SAPS? How do you deal with the scourge? You're, good morning, Amanda. You are quite... All right, uh, perfect by what you're saying. That we're dealing with crimes here which we, happens within closed doors. We're dealing with crimes here which happens within the dark alleys. Ourselves as police officers are called in when the incident already occurred. But the question is, what happens to our society? The police officers cannot, or the police department, cannot put a camera in each and every house. As much as we can put a lot of cars patrolling, visible policing, but at the end of the day, these crimes are happening within the family. We find women and children and elderly suffering in the hands of those whom they trust, who are supposed to protect them. 
It's a multidisciplinary approach that we're after, isn't it? It's not just one aspect of society that needs to do something. We're seeing civil society rising up. We're seeing the police also taking a stand. But we're also seeing business, and that's where you come in. Just yes. talk to us about uh, the particular avenues that you've taken to try and deal with the issue of crime in South Africa, generally speaking. Thanks, Andile. Um, business support is quite critical to government. Um, uh, I think crime has changed and developed to a point where it's now out of control in the eyes of the community. But what has happened is that the solutions that we put in place don't match the change, and that is critical. And I just want to reaffirm what Yusuf has indicated. We constantly blame the police. We constantly blame law enforcement. And you must understand that the police hands are limited. And what we do as Business Against Crime is to try to encourage that integrated approach between communities between uh, uh, leaders, not only community leaders, but I'm talking about parents. That's where it starts. Um, you're talking about educators in schools. You're talking about the children themselves. Unfortunately, we've reached a point in our society where we cannot treat children like children. We've got to start transforming their behavior so that they will learn and understand and become more aware of the environment in which they're in. And that is, is quite critical. We need to empower children with the knowledge that if you're faced with a particular situation, how would you react appropriately so that it may save your life? So those are the key issues for us. And then, of course, going back to government, government has put a lot on the table. You've got various pieces of legislation. You've got policies. Um, the Sexual Offences Act that has recently been amended is quite comprehensive. It makes sexual offences in the country far more serious. There's far more stringent uh, punitive value that comes out of the legislation. We also have a national policy framework that came about to, ha to actually um, assist government uh, in an integrated manner to implement the act. But that uh, um, side of it is more reactive. It's a reactive solution. We need to start being mm -hmm. proactive. And you'll find that communities, with all due respect, when mm -hmm. there are incidents, there's huge uproars. People mm -hmm. want to go out and kill the perpetrator and do all sort of things. What they need to focus on is being proactive. Mm -hmm. Rather form some sort of support structure for families who require the support, especially if you're talking about gender violence, especially if you're talking about children um, that live in social circumstances where you know that it's going to uh, be a problem for them or it's going to expose them to criminal conduct. Mm -hmm. So communities need to come in and start yeah. taking a proactive role. I want to explore that a little bit further when we come back from this ad break, uh, uh, but I think uh, you, you raise such pertinent uh, points there. It's, it's a very sad day in history when we have to make our children be so guarded. Now Absolutely. they must know uh, what to do when, and they can't be free like little kids uh, anymore, but it is a necessity in the times that we're living in. Uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at uh, the issue of the perpetrator and they being a product of the of society and perhaps we need to look within ourselves as individuals, as uh, parents, as community members and see what role that we need to take in order, with, uh, in order to deal with the scourge. We'll also take questions from the floor and your questions as well. So do send us a tweet, do SMS uh, via Morning Live SMSs. Also we're on Twitter. You can either get a hold of me personally, Yusuf is here, some of the panelists also tweeting away uh, and some of the civil society organizations here with us. I'll give you more of those details in just a moment. A quick ad break. We continue our discussion when we come back.